Hey family, so today I received a new box, a box full of goodies, the new Nemesis Lockdown. So I thought I'd take a moment to go through with you what came in this new box and show you some of these amazing new goodies that come as part of this amazing game. I also managed to grab myself a couple of the hoodies. Um, of course, play that. And the cat's plushy. But enough of that. Have a look and see what comes in the main box. Now, I did start to go ahead and record this before, and the uh, video stopped. So I'm starting again. And I'm hoping that it will come through. So, what we have is the rules of the game, um, and in true fashion, if you don't want to read the book, then watch the video how to play. Um, I like the fact, as with the original, the rule book is the size of the box, it's good, it's spacious. There is quite a bit of text, there is quite a bit to cover in terms of the game's rules and its complexity. Um, the graphics throughout are fantastic. The quality of the book is great, as was the original. So, there. It also comes with two room mats. Now, unlike the original game, where the two room mats were the same, this is different. I'm guessing, because I haven't fully covered it yet, that one room mat is for one side of the board and the other room mat is for the other side of the board, being different scenarios that you'll be playing through as you play the game. So we have a laboratory card with the, uh, I believe those are the eggs for the aliens, um, intruders. And then this, so these are the Night Stalkers, which we'll be facing in this iteration of the game. And it looks like the kind of slightly changed and different with these numbers going across here. Um, but we've still got that same iconography with the larva, the adults, the creepers, the breeders, and the queen. So, yeah, look forward to digging into all the new goodness or badness that that will bring in. Um, we have new classes, um, so we have the Hacker and the Sentry that we'll be bringing to this game. And uh, as always, these pop out very nicely, nice decent graphics throughout on the back, the character boards, um, and these pieces, as we've come to know from the original game, which you would shuffle up all with the number two, shuffle them all together, put them face down, and you'd place them out. It looks like this one particular special room here, uh, and that reminds me of the scanner to check whether you've been infected or not. How that works, I do not know, but keen and interested to find out. So, as a side, we have more characters. So we have lab rat there we go and the xeno biologist and each have their minis in this box of goodness and we have these tokens here that would feature on top of the hexagonal room tokens um, and when you flip them over they tell you whether there's a malfunction in a room um, if you're going to get attacked if there's fire etc so it looks like a lot of those mechanics are the same from the original game so that's good we have a survivor presumably someone who survived the original nemesis and is now on mars <laughs> much to their joy uh, and we have the janitor the newly appointed janitor who clearly doesn't have a clue where anything is hence when you start the game as within nemesis you'll have all the rooms shuffled together and you won't know the layout of the arena that you're playing on. Um, these are all new. 
well, these are for uh, kill all who have four or less knowledge. So these seem to be some kind of secret objectives of some sort. So we're interested to see how they are used in the game. And we have the bag building component, the different levels of the intruders that we are be facing throughout the game. And we start to then populate the rooms and the hexes that we'll see. Now and we'll see here. These are very different to the original Nemesis with these additional bits of information on the back of these discs that we'll be pulling. So yes. Graphics as always throughout. All superb. So there's the first player token. We change that from a cat to a raccoon, space raccoon in this game. Um, we have some launch, no launch tokens. Um, and we have the, the similar mechanics that we saw regard these rooms from the original game. These punch out. There we go. So you have it's a level two room. So you have level one and level two rooms. You shuffle them all together. And you flip them over as you discover them and explore your way around. There are different things that you can search for. This represents the number of items that are located in that particular room. And this particular room is the vent control room. So you would use that board that we were looking at earlier and describe you the rooms. And there'll be particular things that you could do and use actions to activate in here. We also have these dials. I don't know what these dials are for. So again, I'd be interested to find out how they will be used. And these look like the counterpoints of these dials. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> we have a rover. Uh, have a mini for that. Nice. Lots of eggs. They're very cute. Quite like those. And some more rooms. We'll level two rooms there. Laboratories, cargo, cave entrance, cave, mm -hmm. we have the nest, emergency room, they're all level two rooms, not seen any level one rooms, maybe this is different, isn't it? no, no level one rooms, so I don't know if you, I believe this is standalone, so you don't have to have the first game in order to play the second game, so there's no requirement to have a level one rooms, but look at this, you maybe shuffle them all together, and um, it's just, ah, so that has got a one on it, opposed to the others that did have a two on them on the reverse. So maybe it works that way instead, perhaps. Maybe this is two actions to use the power generator, cooling system, archive, etc. I see you'd be able to search for an engineering card here, as we're here, over here, ammunition card, and over here. You have the option to search for anything, think of the healing, ammunition or engineering cards. Uh, we've got some doors you can punch out and let's use those throughout the game. Um, the elevator, one of the significant differences in the game mechanic with lockdown being that you are on a base. And this would be the game board. Um, I think I'm going to take a shot of the game board separately. We can have a look at that in a moment. That's a bit of a big beast. Digging into the contents of the box. So again, we have the contamination card. You would, if you were contaminated, you'd have a card. You'd slide in here and you'd have to scan to identify if you were infected. A fantastic mechanic. Worked really, really well in the first um, Iteration of the game. I'm sure it'll work just as well in this iteration. Nice nemesis bags, good size bag. Got the drawer on it so you can put everything in, put it in here. It's not going to all escape and run away, so that's good. Um, and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a good size for me. I've got fairly big um, hands when it comes to bags. I find some games I struggle, uh, but no, that's a good. Good size, so thank you for that. That's some extra baggies for organising stuffs. Now what do we have next? The bag is already pre-filled. They have some nice glass beads. 
to indicate tokens on things. We have our gratuitous uh, function tokens, those icons that we saw presented here. Nice, shiny dice. Um, I don't recall seeing a D12 in the original game, so that I'm guessing is a new mechanic. And likewise, these icons on the blue dice. Very nice though, they do look nice. Right, look at them. Sound nice. Really nice quality to them. That's coming through, there you go. Beautiful. Really nice. There's no issues seeing what the iconography is. They're very, very clear. Very pretty. Really nice gem effect. Beautiful like those got some disc rings for indicating your players and to your colors and um, fire tokens and um, put out on the board there is a fire in the room noise tokens and there's always seems to be a bit of a discrepancy on this noise is this noise that you make as you wander around is this noise that is being made as you wander around mm seems to be interchangeable somewhat but anyway noise attracts bad things noise is bad that's pretty much all you need to know these really with the tokens for those uh, counters that we saw as i said don't know what they could be used for and there's space for some more counters in here these are the standees for presumably the doors and you get some nice tokens that can be used on the player boards or character boards to track stuff all good very nice and then we start to get to the meat of so we get these nice little uh, holders so this is where you can have your cards slotted in front of you and obviously for your compadres it'll tell you which number you are uh, so that's nice and um, we have our new characters you can see that Coming through there, always incredible detail on these miniatures. That backpack, that backpack, it looks like it's actually detached from her, and genuinely sat on her back. Brilliant, love that. Must say, I think that's the survivor there. I won't know all of these off the top of my head. <sighs> that is the, whoops. The janitor, love that, brilliant. I heard you had some vomit in the room, I just came to give a quick spray. Yes, there he is, very good. There's a bit of flushing on there, that's fine, we'll take care of that. It's not too bad, not too bad. As always, though, the detail brilliant and we've got the detail on the actual bases as well beautiful <laughs> see a glance I always look at this and I always think that is one heck of a gun is that a gun or is that part of the scenery <laughs> the hand on the doorway some kind of a scout See that one, sort of like an explorer. Uh, looks like it's got like bagpipes going on. <laughs> That's right, that'll come up well when it's all painted up. Very good. Yeah, and a bit of flushing on the, uh, the leg there. And that traded arm. Very good. What is this? It's like a robot android. Wow, okay. And then last but not least, the characters. <laughs> this is a 
scientist of some sort, experimenter, laboratory. <laughs> Stunning. Very good, very good. Again, there's always a detail on these. Incredible. Then we get on to the baddies, whatever one's here for. Intruders. Oh, I love this. I love this. It is so cute. That thing. These tiny little things scurrying around. You can hear them in the walls. Yes, you can imagine it, can't you? Can you imagine it? Yes. Love that. It's resting its foot paw on a magazine. <laughs> and I love the fact that we've got the two different miniatures for many of the sculpts. Not least for this one. love the detail, the fine detail, it's going to paint up beautifully, we require hardly any effort at all to get these things painted up, they just the, the level of detail, absolutely stunning on these, these night stalkers, you can really just imagine a very dark, and glossy, and you just kind of see glimpses of sharp edges of stuff as you try and work your way around the corridor lights flickering and just the wear in the shadows of these monsters looming and lurking and every corner and every corridor <laughs> brilliant what's this wow Getting a bit bigger now. Oh, yeah, that's crouched, ready for action. That thing will just absolutely pounce on you. Can you imagine that? Look at that. Just crouched, poised. Lovely. And we have our final layer of the night stalkers. And they get big. Boy, they get big. Wow. I'm just going to take one of these minis just to exemplify the size of these things. They are stunning. I mean, you would not want to encounter these things, would you? And a corridor. Wow. Just amazing. Again, the detail on these things, just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And even just the scenic pieces. We've got a couple of sculpts here. Wow, that's got them particularly beefy. <laughs> An oil drum. Crushing it out of his foot. And that One's hastening its way. Great speed in the dark. Pegging it down the corridor. Searching for flesh. <laughs> oh, I particularly love this one. Just hanging off. <laughs> Swinging in. It's this cable here, it's just been severed spikes everywhere. Beautiful stuff. And then of course whoop, their queen hooks everywhere, look at that. <laughs> their queen. Birthing more eggs. Ready to eat more unsuspecting survivors should they survive wow 
of course lots of cards you get your mini cards you get your night stalker weaknesses that will aid you in researching and defeating the night stalkers lots of new equipment some of which you can combine to create new powerful goodies to defeat your foes and then of course equipment cards themselves um, aid you this is a weapon it's a heavy item again they've stuck to the same iconography crafted items that you can get by combining things that you discover um, yeah again good 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 use of iconography throughout it takes a bit of getting used to in any heavy iconography game but yeah very very simple makes sense very good and you get different cards for your different characters weird metabolism <laughs> different action cards to form up your deck that you use and cycle through round after round to determine what you can do computer action objectives Good. Serious wounds. You know, you don't want them. Ooh, a player help card. That's good. Drop to five action cards. Move the first player token. Perform your actions. Two actions on each player's turn. Repeat three steps until all players have passed. And then you come to the bad stuff. Launch the CSS pods. Hmm. Need the time track. Noise removal. Intruder track. Attack. Fire damage resolve event card and intruder bag. Developments are very much the same as it was in the original with a slight tweak. That's fair enough. But an event. Mm. Radioactive dust. You have to get one contamination card and a slime marker. It wasn't bad enough to get these things when you're just wandering around trying to avoid stuff no you've got cards hitting you as well very good so in true form it would appear there will be lots of ways for the game to defeat you and you will have a particular way to defeat the game just to show you some of this uh, side graphics that obviously you won't get to see when it's out there in the stores on the shelf without it being opened it's great I always love the, the use of color in these graphics and they just really do bring across the theme throughout it's beautiful so for the core box i'll see if i can get the uh, board out and i'll be back in a minute okay so this is the primary side of the board and uh, what you have here let me have a follow up you'll see just uh, yeah, it goes on and on. Um, so external then there is a base you can get to. You can get outside of the main complex. Have electricity. You have this big long lift shaft here that is used throughout the game as you traverse using the lift to go from level to level to level. You have these power icons to indicate whether the lights are on or off. Remember these primary enemies are the night stalkers. Um, if you have the lights on, it aids you, it helps getting rid of noise. If you have uh, so the attraction of the aliens dissipates on the basis that they really don't want to be in a place lit up like a floodlight. And they're going to be seen very obviously. Transversely, when that power goes out and it all goes dark, you don't want to be in that area of the complex. 
and let's say here, ah, here we go, yeah, so you've got these number two rooms here, 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 so they are shuffled together and scattered, and then on the number one rooms, so this will be, so every time you play the game, you'll have that disorienting experience, not knowing where stuff is, or adds to the confusion, the chaos, trying to overcome the situation that is locked down. And here's that uh, that room that had that almost that scanner uh, iconography on it. So I'll pause as I flip the board over. So this side of the board was kept very much a secret. Um, so I don't really know anything about this side of the board other than it's similar in terms of you've got now this side down here, the lift. Um, you've got the power icons, so the three zones that you're trying to get power to. You've got a new area up here as a, an external entity. Um, and a likewise one down here is another external entity and what the differences are and how they work I couldn't tell you. I'm sure I'll discover those in due course you've got points here and here here so opportunities to traverse down here outside of the camp which I'm sure will bring its own risks and challenges. So let's have a quick look how that compares to the neoprene mat. And as if by magic there is the neoprene mat. Beautiful. The colours on this have come out really well. I heard quite a number of people complaining or alluding to quite a number of games where they switched out a board for a neoprene mat and then they found that actually the, the quality of the graphics wasn't quite the same as you get playing with the board but uh, I don't think there's any such loss here this is very very good very bright but vibrant you can really see those colors pop and the different areas you've got your red yeah yellow your blue areas there for your electricity um yeah and again well, like throughout that it's dark but it is detailed and the detail really does pop um, just beautifully really well done um, so the idea is if you were in here you had to move into here you'd roll to see if noise occurs you'd have the potential of uh, the number one two three or four and that would determine where you'd end up putting the noise tokens um, more than one noise token in any one location indicates you've attracted the presence of an intruder and they will then come and uh, pay you a visit um, or stitched around the edges so it's not this isn't going to fray and wear over time beautiful stuff and uh, that's the uh, other side look at that so beautiful we're looking at it again now so the other way around what we we're looking before this is the, the two complexes outside ways to traverse in and out of the three sections of the lab and your elevator brilliant beautiful Just stunning colors love they are really carrying out the the mars theme and sense the arid red landscape beautifully done excellent so let's move on to the stretch goals so these are the chitterids. Um, so again, very, very different concept here. Rather than intruders that are running around the base, what you have here is on the same base, you'd be trying to fight off these chitterids. And I uh, just love the, the colours used on here. It's just really pop. Um, Got research objects, carnivores. Mm. Okay, got different laboratories out oh, for using perhaps carnivores in the new gameplay arena. You flip it over. Void cedars, oh, 
beautiful. Oh, I'm loving this. This is brilliant. And there's part of me that makes me wonder whether this is partly to do with something else that is in this box. Let's have a look. So, some nice punch boards. And tree treads. These are the new baddies that you get in this particular expansion. There they are in their glory, their queen. Pop down. And the idea is, and again, don't want to read the rules. Watch this video. Very good. A nice sub on the back. <laughs> Mycelium. The fly slime tokens to me. Got germinators, spores. Mm. What are these? Germinator growth. Interesting. Look at that. Look at that. You wouldn't want to be in that corridor, would you? You're looking the wrong way, love. <laughs> Where's the mice? Get a bit of teeth on that thing. Oh, the graphics are always really capture the sense of the feel of the game so, so well. So, and on the other side, uh, the chitrid board, the eggs and the nest. These <laughs> beautiful little cubes, which you will get to see. This, I'm excited. <laughs> There's heft. There's heft to this book. Wow. Okay. This is a graphic novel come scenario campaign. Untold Stories number three. Yes, there was number one and two with the original game. This brings number three as a continuation of it. I'm not going to delve into that, but yeah, very excited for that. So, what do we got over here? So these were, they refer to these as these are the spores. This is perhaps how they pop up all around the place. Look at the vibrant green. Vibrant green. These things you can imagine glowing in the dark as you're wandering around. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Look at that. I'm guessing you would have the big queen in the middle and then a rotation of sorts around the edge. Yeah, I love that graphics on there, very kind of foliage and fungal and overgrown mossy of it. Uh, so what else have we got in the box? There's one here. <laughs> okay, let's start here. First player token. First player token this time. No, we've moved on from cats. We have a space raccoon. <laughs> Brilliant. That's just got a great painted up. Beautiful. As is everything. The detail. Always incredible. Doors, new doors. Those doors. Of course, yes, there is a crack because you can represent broken doors. You blow a door up, there's no longer a door there. You cannot close that door. Fantastic. Loving that. A whole bunch of those. So much better than God. <laughs> Want to get outside the complex? Not the problem. Here is your great big external door. <laughs> Reminds me of another, another sci-fi film. And the scene is this particular gentleman opens the door and as this thing's just opening and opening and opening and opening, it's great. Big, massive thick door. That's one big door. And then repeats exactly the same phrase from his son that they did the sequel. I'll avoid mentioning the name of the film. <laughs> so what have we got? We've got small ones. Guessing these are the small ones. Reaching out to grab you. There's suckers all over there. Loving that. 
target that. And then one would guess they evolve. Perhaps, or maybe they start off like this, a stinger. They just stab you in the back as you're walking past them in the corridor, perhaps. Okay. And they get a bit bigger and bulbous. Yeah. <laughs> like they've grown over <laughs> the doorways. Nice. Creeping throughout the complex. Again, just the detail of these things are just going to take to paint so, so well. And their queen, their behemoth, that you ultimately have to face down. Wow, look at that, such a great job, bring that out. So other goodies we have in here, we have these, okay, they are hard plastic. Just again, the, the luminosity of that, the colour, just brilliant. Mycelium, mycelium, mycelium. My friend Uncle Ben has always ribs me for my pronunciation of such words. But there you go, the southern barbarian heathen that I am. And uh, <laughs> Rover Mergers, we saw the card as a punch board in the original box. The stretch goals, you get a Rover, has got flat tyres. Mm, never mind, okay. <laughs> but otherwise that's beautiful. Good. Love the detail that that's gonna paint that so so well again the texture and those tracks. Fantastic. Slides back in there. And we covered so we get a whole bunch of new cards for the new barriers. And these we saw these on those boards. <laughs> these are the germinators to determine the growth. Yes, you would roll these and you do. <sighs> oh well. That. Do you roll well? Brilliant. Like that. So you get these green germinator growths. As well as some purple ones buried away. In here. If I can get them out. So there's the fun part. There we go. Oops. Run away. There you go again. Yeah, just the colour really comes through and you can see very clearly. Three, one, two. Yeah. And we're detecting the growth. And then they come across really well. But there's no mistake in there. Yeah, what you've got. Brilliant job. Excellent. Really, really well done. As always, just the, the production level is off, off the chart. As always, superb. Can't wait to get these fully unpacked and out onto the table. And again, you've got some more um, graphics <laughs> and on the side. There's those spiky dudes. Let's see them. <laughs> you discovered a white in the basement? Okay, that's great. Their, their, their capability to capture these signals in their graphics really is superb. Beautiful, stunning artwork throughout. Go, like those. And uh, talking of artwork, another goodie that I got my Kickstarter was the Nemesis Lockdown art book. 
Um, and again, yeah, just just full of just the graphics that are used throughout <laughs> on the on the cards and the various pieces of the game. He's not a happy janitor. <laughs> He's like. I can't believe someone's made all this mess and I've got to clean it up. <laughs> there we go. Pinned! A pin, help me! Look at that. Superb. Obviously some of the stuff we saw on the around the edges of the boxing. Just colours. <laughs> It's amazing the capability to capture the, the rainbow effect here. I remember when I was young being with my dad and he used, he used to take photographs on his you know, professional cameras with all these different lenses. And I remember seeing all the rainbows and stuff like that. Just oh, beautiful, beautiful. So we have Space Cats. Yes, if you were not happy with just having a space raccoon and wish to complete your set of space cats continuing the evolution of cats with the new alien races here we go let us not disappoint you <laughs> we have the night stalker infected cat And the chitrid infected cat. Yeah, it's a bit more difficult to get out of the box. There we go. <laughs> They're soaked in eyes. Wow. <laughs> Again, just incredible detail. The fine textures on that just paint up so, so well. And last but not least, the kings as alternative sculpts to the queens that came in the main boxes. So no gameplay difference, purely aesthetics. Look at that. <laughs> Just that giant maw ready to consume anyone that gets too close and even those you know, with their mandibles just to whip you in be consumed fantastic and, oh, I love this love this again that, that darkness that scene just creeping around those corridors and the pitch black <laughs> just captures the imagination so well so so looking to all forward to the experience of getting this to the table and hopefully sharing some of that with you in due course well i hope you enjoyed thanks for watching please show your uh, share your favor with us and like and subscribe and we'll see if we can create some more content soon thanks for watching